Okay. Welcome, guys, to our weekly team, monthly team meeting. Um, I am excited to be here. I am, this is like sort of my jam. This organization and hitting your goals is kind of what I do. A lot of what I'm going to talk about today is not going to really be like, not that it's not going to be motivating, but it's going to be like how to's. So I am recording um, and I will upload the presentation. So you can have it, um, so don't like feel super compelled to take a ton of notes. Obviously, you can if you want to. Um, but this is really how I built my business. Um, I, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jillian, and um, I'm the founder of Team Fit Rescue. I started this business about 25 months ago, like a little over two years ago now, um, really for the discount. And very quickly I came to realize that there was huge potential in it and I decided I was going to give it a shot. I still work full time. I work a pretty high pressure job at a fortune 10 company and I do this business in about an hour a day. Um, I put in an hour a day Monday through Friday and I probably put in about five hours total on the weekends like as I have time. So all my catch up stuff is done on the weekends and I'm going to teach you how I do this. That hour does not include my workouts so I definitely do that separate um, but I'm going to teach you how I do this and how to really stay focused and take full advantage of your power hour. So these are your power hour to do's. So every single week, you're going to write out your power hour to do list. My power hour to do list does not change super often. Um, on the weekends is when I do my catch up stuff. So like my non power hour type stuff, um, if I'm going to work on a newsletter or recognition for you guys or, you know, something else that isn't a business building thing. I'm going to do that on the weekends, but my power hour really doesn't change that much. I write out my weekly goals and I follow my daily to-do list. I read or listen to personal development every day. To be quite honest, I do mostly listening um, because I'm a multitasker. So I'll listen to the national wake up call. I walk my dog. I will listen to a book on tape. While I walk my dog. I, honestly, I do a lot of YouTube. It's free. If you go to like, any coach that really likes a YouTube channel, you could listen like all day to the stuff they have on there. I work on me. I am first. Like I love having a team, but you really have to lead by example. You don't want to, this, I'm not a manager. I'm not anyone's boss. The best way for me to help my team grow is to show them instead of tell them. So I'm a product of the product. I work out. I drink my Shakeology. Um, I do my business, and others follow what I do. That's what I do every single day. I, I, I make sure that I am leading by example instead of telling people what to do. I get my mindset right. Um, I want to help as many people as possible without expecting anything in return. I'm going to talk to you guys about my free groups here in just a second and sort of how I run them and why they are the backbone of my business. Um, and then number six is kind of something that I talk about a lot. I um, have listened to a lot of top coaches and they're all very different. If you look at the top coaches, some have kids, some don't. Some are older, some are younger. Some have had a big transformation, some have not. Males, females, you know, um, they come from, you know, well-to-do families. Some are single. Some, anyway, they're all different. But the one thing they have in common is you never, ever, ever, ever hear a top coach making an excuse or complaining about something. They certainly don't hit all their goals, but they don't make an excuse for that. They're just like, yep, I missed that because of X, Y, Z, and I'm not going to miss it next month because of X, Y, Z, or this is how I'm going to fix it. So I think that's really, really, really important. So what the heck is this power hour that I keep talking about? A lot of you know about it, but I know that there are some new people on the call, so I wanted to kind of go over it really briefly. So I add new people to my network every single day, and I'll give you guys an opportunity to ask questions about this at the end. Um, I keep a list, and I start connecting with people and building relationships. 
I cross posted a video the other day in our team group on how I keep my lists in Facebook and how I keep everyone straight. So if you have a second, take a look at that. It's also on my YouTube channel. I return all of my messages. Um, I share twice a day about something business related, right? Workout, Shakeology, um, recognition. Today I did a country heat transformation and I did, um, today's Monday, right? The weekly team um, leaderboard. I invite two to three people a day to my next group. Um, I actually do this sort of in clumps, like here, 15 to 30 people daily. And every single week, I have a group to invite them to. And I'm going to show you how I do that on my next slide. I follow up when I talk to people um, about the challenges or the business. I make a to-do list for tomorrow, like who do I have to follow up with? Who didn't I get a chance to contact? I post on my team's page. Um, I'm pretty random with it. If I see something I like, I post on it. I don't normally have a plan, but I'll go to our big corporate page and make sure you guys are getting all the information that you need. Um, and I'll also, you know, if I think of a great idea or if I see, I like to do this a lot. If I see another coach post something awesome, I'll share it and be like, this is amazing so that you guys can get ideas of what you should be posting. I post on my personal page and my Instagram at least two times a day. Um, Every single day, I share my journey, I share my story, and that's not just health and fitness, that's life. Um, I, and I really concentrate on, you know, my health and fitness, obviously, my dogs, I talk a lot about my dogs, and then, like, I'm kind of a funny person, like, I'm not super serious, so I think that those are sort of the three things that make up my page. You'll find funny stuff, you'll find stuff about my dogs, and you'll find health and fitness when you come to my page. I put the business in front of three to five people a week. I really do this in clumps, so I do more like 20 a month. Um, and the last thing is, this is what I focus on every day, every day, every day, every day. No excuses, non-negotiable. I mean, no matter what, I get this hour done every single day. Um, I don't sit there and scroll Facebook. I don't, you know, I sacrifice TV time, but I make sure this gets done. It's not always an hour at a time. Today was absolutely insane. So um, I did I did not do anything on my lunch because I did the country heat with everyone. I had to do some after work. Um, and then I had to go run some errands. And then I did like another 20 minutes. So I got it in, but it didn't all happen in an hour. Okay. Why does this calendar look crazy? I don't know. I don't know why it looks crazy. Sorry. But um, at the top of our team page, every single month, you'll see a team calendar. It is pinned there. It doesn't move. And in the team calendar write-up is a link to the Google Doc, which if some people like to look at it like this, like with the calendar and the days, that's great. And some people prefer to look at a Google Doc um, and look at it that way and see how long something is and what it runs and whatever. This was from February. So um, how the heck do I invite people to a group every single week? Like, why would I start a group every single week? Well, it's not always a paid challenge group. So this is how I structure my month every single month. And this is how I stay focused. This is how I'm not, you know, I'm not inviting people to 500 different things at once, which I think is when we get overwhelmed and unsure of what we're doing and we get like, oh my God, I don't even know what to invite people to. There's so much going on. Oh my God, what do I do? Okay, take a deep breath and pick a calendar that works for you. Everyone is always welcome in my challenge groups. If it's on the calendar, you guys are welcome to use it. You are welcome to be in there for your own support and you are welcome to be in there and add, add your challengers, 100%. I ask that if you add your challengers that you contribute to the group, that you post regularly. But if you just want to be in there for yourself, that's fine too. So in February, um, I started the month with a five-day healthy eating crockpot group. And in our team Google Docs, which if you don't have access to those, make sure to talk to your upline to get access. There's tons of meal plans, recipe guides, um, free groups, all sorts of stuff in there. This was a crockpot one. We have a barbecue one. We have a ton of regular ones. In August, my free group is going to be about financial fitness. So I'm going to be talking to people about like how to budget and save and all that sort of stuff. Um, 
And there's also an outline in the free groups for that. There's a meal prep outline. There's tons of stuff in Google Docs. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. That is where people get sucked in and their time gets consumed. So you want to make sure that you're not, you're not reinventing the wheel and you're sort of, you know, all the resources are there. I've done the work for you or someone else has done the work for you and I put it in Google Docs for you. So I start with a free group. And I invite people to this free group. I talk to them. I set up an event. I see who RSVPs. Yes, I get them in the group. I run this free group. It gives me a good basis to see who the heck I'm going to invite to my next group. You'll notice that the second week of the month, I always start a paid group. And what I mean by paid is someone that's purchased something, either Shakeology or a program or both. But by starting with that free group, I'm able to gauge, okay, who might be interested in kind of taking the next step with me and going to a paid group, right? And that's where the next group comes in. So I start that group. So that the first, the week before the free group, I'm inviting to the free group. The week of the free group, I'm looking at who's active in the free group and who I'm chatting with, and I'm using them and inviting them to my paid group. And then the week after that, or two weeks after that, depending on how the month is, I invite people to our intro to coaching group, which is a glimpse into what we do as coaches. I feel like I'm dark. There we go. Um, which is a glimpse into what we do as coaches. So it allows me to get a good basis of who might be interested, invite them to a paid group, hit success club, and in the second half of the half of the month, work on recruiting and seeing who in my paid group might be interested in coaching. Like, who do I think, like, is this person loving this program? Like, you know, would they make an amazing coach? Like, start talking to them about that. And having the intro group allows me to not just say, hey, want to be a coach? It allows me to say, hey, I have this totally free informational group next week. I think you'd make a great coach because of X, Y, Z. Would you like to join us? So, um, it really allows me every single week to be inviting to something. And two of the three groups I invite to every month, the free group in the beginning of the month and the informational um, coach group are free, totally free, right? So there's like no pressure there for anyone. So this is how I structure my month to make sure that I'm helping the most people. And like I said, I mean, those free groups, not everyone commits. But it's a great way to gauge who might be interested and maybe help some people that, you know, aren't ready to commit but are ready for your help. And I think, I think that's great. And I think that's really what is the essence of what we do as coaches, you know, is really helping people. And, of course, on here I have, like, the promotions and, you know, um, we did this fun contest to beat me in Success Club points, Power Hour. And there was also a team cup in February. So this is sort of how I put my month together. So I talk a lot about inviting. Well, how the heck do you invite people? And what do you say to people? So I go with the CCQ, which is compliment, comment, question. So, hey, I love your dress. I think it looks great on you. Where did you get it? Easy, right? Compliment, comment, question. Um, oh my goodness, your little boy is so cute. Um, you know, I love his blue outfit. How old is he? Really easy stuff. Really, really easy. You always want to end with a question so you can sort of like start a conversation with that person. Um, use more personal questions. You know, take a look at their profile if you're just getting to know them so you don't just seem like someone who doesn't know anything about them. Um, ask them things like, have you considered? Um, use their name, like saying like, hey, hon, hey, girl, hey, whatever. I know on Instagram we don't always have their name, so that's a little bit different, but on Facebook we do. So use their name. Um, some questions to use. How long have you been into XYZ? Maybe they love Pilates yogis. How long have you loved, have you been doing yoga? You know, do you like downward dog or upward dog? Have you tried um, shakes in the past? What's, you know, if you're following someone because you admire them, you know, what's your best advice for back pain? What would you recommend? Whatever. These are really easy ways to start conversations with people and not just be like, ah, beach body, you know, like,
just like talk to them like they're normal people. Um, and like I said, I'll post this, so don't worry about that. Social media planner. So um, I talk about posting on social media. You have to be doing the posting and you have to be doing the inviting. If you're not posting, no one has any idea what you're doing. And if you're not inviting, people are often nervous to reach out to you. So I say this a lot and I say it on a lot of calls, but I'm going to reiterate it again because there's going to be new people listening to this. People are embarrassed to reach out to you. Telling someone that they're overweight, that you're overweight and you need help, or that you're financially in a hard place and you need to make money is hard. It's hard for people. It, you might be like, oh my goodness, like of course I want them to reach out to me. Of course I'm going to be sympathetic. Of course I want to help them. They don't know that. They're embarrassed. They're embarrassed to say, you know, I need to lose 30 pounds. Can you help me? They're embarrassed to say, you know, my family's in debt. I really need help paying off my credit cards. Do you think coaching is for me? They don't feel good enough. So if you don't reach out to them and say, hey, like, you know, I think you'd be a great coach because you may never hear from them. Like you may never hear anything from them. So I think that's really important to note right, is that you need to be reaching out to people as well as posting on social media so people have some idea what you're doing. Like coaches say to me, well, you know, this just isn't working and I don't see a single post about what they're doing as a coach or anything about a Beachbody program or anything. Of course it's not. No one has any idea what you're doing, you know. They, they don't even know how to approach you or, or what workout programs you're doing or how to come to you. So this is a cute little planner. If you're like, I have no idea what to post. This is like two to three posts every single day. Super easy. Okay. And now I'm going to give you my top five time management tips. So have a plan and stick to it. Plan your month. I don't care if it's the same as my month. Um, you know, use my stuff. That's totally fine. I'm always down with that. I actually think brand new coaches should not be running their own challenge groups alone anyway. If you have a success partner, that's one thing, but they shouldn't be running them alone for a myriad of reasons. It takes way too much time to set them up um, and they don't have the support they need. So you want to make sure that you are running them either with someone else or that you're doing them in your coaches group. Um, do your power hour every day, every day, every day, every day. Put the necessary before your fun. So what I mean by that is if you love making flyers and you hate messaging people, you need to message people first. <laughs> um, I'm terrible at flyers, guys. This is, this is off the beaten path, I guess. Um, I'm terrible at flyers. I used to waste, and this isn't an exaggeration, three hours in pick monkey trying to make a flyer that looked like doo-doo garbage like like a three-year-old did it i'm done with that i do not do that anymore i use um a service called fiverr f-i-v-e-r-r -R, and you can like hire someone to make a flyer for you for five dollars that three hours of my time is worth five dollars to me so don't concentrate on the stuff that you are bad at don't do that Concentrate on the stuff you're good at. Hire someone else to do the stuff you're bad at. Um, you also need to get yourself organized. So however you want to do that, I use Streak, S-T-R-E-A-K, which is totally free. It's an add-on to Google, um, to Gmail, and it's, it's a CRM management tool, and it's how I track my customers. I know a lot of people like to use... Um, MailChimp or like some other communications means and that's fine for me. I like to log in every single day to Gmail and be able to do everything from that. I don't want to have to log into MailChimp again. Um, there's also, I have to figure, I, there's another program that helps you do your power hour. It's made like specifically for Beachbody coaches. So if you're finding that you have no idea where to start. I'll get the name of that for you guys. Um, it does cost money and you get a free 30 day trial. But honestly, there's not a whole lot of point in setting something up for only 30 days. Like streak took me a while to set up. So if you're going to set something up, make sure to stick to it so you're not wasting your time. Um, take your hardships and turn them into success. We all have crap. We all have crap. 
I mean, no one's crap is more or less than someone else's crap. We all have crap. So unless you use that to power you instead of to hold you back, this business is going to be very hard for you because you're always going to say, well, you know, this month I had this, this month I had that. I get that. Like I have had, I've, I've been there. Like I have stuff that I want to cry like some days and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Um, I'll share with you guys. Many of you guys know this about me back in October. I had a miscarriage at like 11 weeks pregnant and, um, it was really hard for me. Obviously it's really hard for anyone. And I thought I just wanted to crawl up in a ball and die. But truthfully, my, the only thing that like got me through it was like being able to work out and stay positive and stay motivated and keep my mindset good because I feel like the old Jillian would have just curled up in a ball and died. But I had huge business goals. I had huge personal goals at that time of the year and I wasn't going to let that happen to me. So I turned that into my success. Um, that was deep, but this is not deep. Stop scrolling. <laughs> That's like not a deep statement at all. Um, I know you guys are looking for inspiration, motivation. I don't know what you're looking for when you scroll, but stop, like stop scrolling. You are not going to find the Holy grail while you scroll. Um, I get a lot of my inspiration from conversations I have with people. You guys will see that a lot. Like I was talking to a friend of mine and la 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 la. And those are real conversations I have. And I post a lot about that kind of stuff, real life stuff. I get a lot of my inspiration from personal development. Um, if I see something come through my newsfeed, I will save it in notes. So I'll be like, okay, that's a cute way to say that. I will save that in notes and I'll come back to it like when I wanna when I wanna watch it. So or when I wanna post something like it, sorry. So, but if you're just sitting there scrolling, I don't know what you're looking for, but you're not gonna find it. Um, so it's really, really key that you kind of hone and, and if you have time, like if you did your power hour and you're like, I'm done, like, you know, scroll all day, like that's fine. But if you're spending time that you should be working on your power hour scrolling and then saying you have no time, you know, what are you gonna, you can't, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So, um, anyway, all right. So I'm giving you guys a takeaway. What does your calendar look like for next month? It's almost August. I can't even believe it. It can look just like my calendar, like I said, um, pinned to the top of the team page with the July calendar, the calendar the in the Google Docs with the calendar is a calendar through December, guys. The entire rest of the year is planned out for me already. When I'm starting groups, what, you know, not every single group, what they're going to be called, but when I'm starting groups and what they're for. So what are you going to be inviting to? Um, right now, you guys need to be inviting to the Country Heat test group. You need to be talking about Country Heat every single day, even if it's not like, you know, I don't mean like every single day isn't a join me post, but it's a hint. It's a, um, it's a breadcrumb, right? You're breadcrumbing, like dropping little hints along the way to what is coming, which is Country Heat, which is freaking huge for our business guys. So. Um, if I were you, that's what I would be inviting to right now. And then I'm going to challenge you to be bold and start reaching out. I know it's hard, but if you never ask, the answer is no. And most people, it's so funny. I post like, I post something the other day. Some lady was like, um, I was really annoyed at the time that you kept, you know, following up with me, but now like, I'm so freaking grateful for you. Thank you for not giving up on me. That's how people feel. They don't feel like, you know, you are so annoying. They feel like you are there to help them. And, and once they say yes, if you prove you were there to help them, if you're like, come in my challenge group and I'm going to keep up with you and I'm going to follow up with you and I'm going to be your friend, you have proven that you were there to help them the entire time and you weren't just there to make a sale and walk away because that is not what we do on this team and that is not what we do Beachbody as a company. It's just not. Um, and this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is about helping people. This is about making long-term income for you and your family or whatever. Um, 
and building long-term relationships. You can make quick money with those quick sales, but you will not build a long-term income unless you build those relationships, get to know people, get them results, and help them. Okay. Whew. That's all I have. I feel like got a little steamy there at the end. Um, does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I tried to start tracking more, um, cause that's like my biggest downfall. And I felt like I spent so much time like writing down names of people I was adding and things like that, that it was just like eating up so much of my time. So my confusion comes in when I'm trying to like reach out to so many people per day and then follow up with my messages and then like even especially with like starting new um, conversations so you don't really want to bring in Beachbody yet. Like how do you balance, um, you know, reaching out to so many people per day? It just seems like how do you keep it from all piling on top of each other? Like this three people and then this three people and then three more people and then three more people like that's well, I feel like I'm pretty deliberate like so I'm inviting like do you have something specific in mind for them or are you just like um sometimes like sometimes I'm just trying to like reach out and start building new relationships and then other times like I'm deliberately talking about certain programs so it could be either so like, I feel like when you have a program, like when not even a program, when you have a group in mind for them, it's really, really easy for me. Um, I will tell you like with my Facebook, I look at who's liking things and commenting on things and I'll reach out to them through that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, the easiest way for me is with the list that I keep like the Facebook. Did you see my video on that? How you can put people in groups? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So if you put people in groups like challenger prospects or whatever, it allows you to just like go through that. You can, you'll click on that feed in the left and it'll only show you people that are challenger prospects. You can comment on their stuff only. And you're not getting lost. They're not getting lost in your feed and you're not feeling like, you know, you have to keep up with them all the time. I'll tell you on Instagram, on Facebook, I will like scroll a little bit. Mm -hmm. On Instagram, I will never scroll. You guys, I will not like your stuff, not because I don't like you, but because I get so freaking lost in Instagram. I feel like I get swallowed by a black hole. Um, and if you look on my YouTube channel, I did a video on, I do my Instagram in about seven minutes a day and I'm very, very, very focused. I do that in clumps. So I can't do the three people a day on Instagram. I get lost. So I do 20 people a week and I reach out to them all at once after I've spent a week of building a relationship, commenting on their stuff. Do we lose Stephanie? I'm still here. I don't know what happened. My camera went out. Oh, okay. But, so what happens after that 20 people in that week and then the next week you go on to another 20 people, but you still keep in touch with the 20 people from the week before? No. Like I, if those 20 people, if, if they respond to me, then I get them on Facebook or on email so I can add them to streak and I move on to the next 20 people. Okay. That's what I do because on Instagram I get so lost. So I would find a way. I understand that it takes time to track, but I think that in the end you will feel better and less frazzled if you're tracking what you're doing. Just like it takes time to set up a calendar and it can be annoying and you can be like, oh, but there's so many other fun stuff going on. I want to do this, 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 this. No, like I really, I don't really add to my calendar. I just like, Stay super focused. Okay. Thank you. So, someone say something? No? Does anyone have anything else? Where do you find the Google Docs? Like, I feel like I've seen them, but now I can't think of where I would go back and get them. So, um, your upline has to share them with you. Okay. The entire folder. 
What is going on? Someone chatted. Oh, I don't know, Andrea. Are you muted? Hold on. Um, no, you're not muted. Um, yeah, so if you, do you have Gmail? Yes, I do. And I've seen the files, but I couldn't get them into my... So you want to save them to Drive? Yeah, into my Drive. They wouldn't stay in my Drive. I don't know. Okay. So you'll just... Honestly, I would go to YouTube and, like, search how to add... I don't know why they're not staying in your Drive, but I bet you that you can get them there pretty easily but if you just go to if you have you already you have access to them I do and I don't remember how because I get to, I, don't, I have to go back and look and I was trying to do it for my phone so I know that messes things up sometimes. yeah don't do it from your, go back you and figure save it out drive from your phone but if you just go to YouTube and you have the link to the whole folder so everything is um in one big folder and then there's like subfolders. So if you have the link to the yeah. folder, you can just save it to your drive. I would, mm -hmm. I, I YouTube stuff all the time. I YouTube how to use PicMonkey and spend three hours doing it. So, <laughs> you know. Um, Andrew, yes, my, my last couple free groups I've run in the big team free group. I've just like added people into it. Um, and yes, I let them stay as long as they want. I feel like it's no sweat off my back, you know. Uh, eventually, they'll they'll probably commit to something, or they'll or they're not, and they got they, they got the help they needed from a free group. I was so tired, which is great. But I recommend a free group. And I don't recommend, like, just a free group that lasts forever. Like, if you just keep it really focused. And if you look in the Google Docs, there's, like, a whole exactly what to say word for word, how to invite to a free group. Um, Megan Eggleston did it, and I threw it in our Google Docs. She's pretty strict about her free group, so she does, like, you have to weigh in, you have to send her your pictures, you have, which is fine, and that works for a lot of people. Um, I don't do that with my free groups, so it's up to you if you want to require that, but I know that she has really good luck with it because people get results, and if people get results, they know that you're the real deal. So. Anything else? No. Andrea, do you have anything else? Hi, Bruce. I didn't see you before. I have one more question. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Um, how many times do you follow up with somebody before you let it go? Ooh. Forever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you never end. Unless they tell me, like, I won't swear, but buzz off. Um, <laughs> because I'll just be... If it, I'll reach out the next month. I'll be like, hey, look, I, I know last month wasn't good for you, um, but I have XYZ starting up. Is this month better? Yeah, my um, most of my objections are money related. Like once I tell them about the cost, they're like, oh, no, you know, I think I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, but that sounds really great or whatever. Do you ever ask them, is what you're doing working? No. That's what I would say. I'd be like, oh, okay, that's great. Is what you're doing working? Wow. That's I mean, true. not, I don't mean that in like a bitchy way, but like yeah. maybe the answer is yes. And then you're like on with your bad self and maybe the answer is no. And then you can like talk to them about, you know, why maybe it isn't working and how you can help them. I posted a really awesome um, call Bonnie Angle did on objections. It's long. It's like over an hour. But she basically goes through every single objection. And you want to talk about someone that doesn't give up. That girl is relentless. She's also number two in the company. So there's something to be said about follow-up. Yeah, I did see that one. That was amazing. That was it was like amazing. And there's... I mean, I would use that stuff. I would totally use that stuff. And you don't, some of the, like, I get a lot of money objections too, but 
usually when people, so like if someone's like, oh, how much is Shakeology? I'll, I won't say $130. I'll be like, it's like $4 a day, which works really well for me because I don't eat many meals for less than $4. That's good. Right? What's coach's name again? Which one? Bonnie? The, the objection one. Bonnie Angle. E-N-G-L-E. It's brutal. <laughs> what? She's brutal in that one. I know. I know. She's hardcore. Yeah, but like she'll tell you too. She never. She never takes no. <laughs> um, I've also had a lot of people come up with a, the Google response. Like they Google about Shakeology and then they find bad information and they're like, "Oh, well, my husband just found this, so I'm not gonna do it." I, and that's fine. And I would just be like, Oh really? I, I mean, I would send them something good in, I had someone once tell me that they were going to do Ovaltine or something instead of Shakeology <laughs> because like they, they basically said Shakeology had all this stuff in it that didn't. And I was like, like they were, they were like, Oh, the sugars, alcohol aren't good for me. I was like, there's no artificial sweetener. There's no sugars, alcohol. Like they just like made up stuff. And I'm not saying you're going to get every single person to say yes. Always. Right. That's, that's just a cop out. That's not like a real excuse. You know, it's not like they, there's something else going on. And Bonnie says this in her call, but like if you, they're looking for you to come back with something. They're not just making an excuse and hoping you go away. They want, they want you to like prove them, prove to them that this is worth it. Yeah. I feel like the best way that I keep their attention is by doing what she talked about with um, like providing them with the, your solution. So like, okay, I experienced that too. And this is what I did. So yeah. I do that a lot and I feel like it keeps people's attention, but they still are like, Oh, that's too much money. Except that you've been a coach like what? Two months. Yeah. So you've had the opportunity to follow up once. Um, I follow up a lot. <laughs> well, I would, I would probably try to like, not follow up as much. Okay. Like maybe follow up like once a month or something like that. Like when you're starting a group. Have you run a free group yet? Um, I have a free group. It's called hashtag we can too, but it's not like a, a like you were talking about a short free group. It's just like a um it, it's like this mission that I came up with to help people like just inspirational type. So it's not. Yeah. So in that group, you can run like a five day clean eating group or whatever. Cause I run my free groups in our team's food and fitness group. So you can run different free groups in that, that are sort of like more focused and will get up engagement a little bit and help people see results. That's a really good idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Andrea, you want to type to us? I don't know why you're gonna have to check your uh, microphone, girl. I hope this was helpful um, in sort of figuring out how you want to stay organized. I Bonnie says she uses pen and paper. She said that I'm like I could never. I can't even read what I wrote half the time, so <laughs> that I won't do. But um, it's really important to figure out how you want to stay organized and sort of stick to it. Cause while it's time consuming, it's going to save you a ton of time in the long run, like a ton of time in talking to people and setting stuff up. Um, and also making sure that you have a calendar for whatever month is coming up. But um, I think that Stephanie having an open-ended free group is like the right way to go when you're a new coach. Mm -hmm. Now I think you can start doing these like little mini challenges in that group and really see some, get people to see some results. You're always going to get objections, guys. Like I probably get like, I mean, on Instagram alone, I get a hundred no's a month. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Easy. Super easily. Because I talk to 20 people a week on there, at least. And that's fine. Like, okay. 
you know? Yeah. I, I just, I feel like you, if you aren't willing to, to get those no's, we, we do like go for no challenges all the time, then it's going to be really, really hard to get those yeses. So anyway, I know a lot of people on this call told me no for a while. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> That, I know. I think it, I always find it so funny. People are like, I'm getting a lot of no's. I'm like, yeah, remember when you told me no for six months? <laughs> it only took me like seven months. Right. Like there's, there, you know, I think that it's important to like understand that not everyone is ready. I'm a very decisive person. So like if I want to do, like I'm, I'm the person that reached out to my coach. She didn't reach out to me. So for those of us that are decisive and like, we want to do this, we, sometimes I struggle with like, I don't want to do this. But I also like, I'm really budget conscious and I talk about all the time how I'm kind of cheap. And I think some people realize like, well, well, if she's spending her money on this, it must be worth it. You know? Mm -hmm. So anything else guys? No. Well, I'll see some of y'all in Nashville. I'm going to stop recording. Um.